Okay, so we just talked about the ending of the game. So now we're just going to kind of get into here this controversy surrounding the branding. A lot of people were upset about this ending and that they felt this game is not really a remake as promised, but it's a sequel. And I'll just go ahead and give one point. I have a few points, but I want to give one point and then I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. But to me, this whole idea of subversion of expectation People are pointing out, oh, Metal Gear Solid 2 and other games where some people liked it, some people thought it was divisive. Those are all good examples, but I, I really think that it, this is a little bit different because we know it, Final Fantasy VII is a known quantity. So when you're not giving mm-hmm. us what you promised, we know what you pro- what's not there. Whereas if it's a brand new game, for example, if Final Fantasy 16 was announced, and they were showing us all these character trailers with all these characters and, and all this different stuff. And then we bought the game and five hours in the entire cast died and you had a new protagonist that dude, that would be, that would be epic in a way. I mean, Metal Gear Solid is a little bit different because we already had an attachment to solid snake, but if this was a brand new story and they did that, I think I would be okay. But I, I think here the execution just sucked because they didn't really give you a very good clue what was going to happen. And when they finally did have that subversion that was revealed, instead of being excited, I, as a fan felt disappointed and mm-hmm. I don't think that's the expectation they wanted. So to me, that was just a, a crap execution of this subversion. So I do think that this was misleading. Um, I do have some other points where I'm just going to show an interview example of what Katase said that was misleading but I don't want to jump into that right now. I want to hear what you guys have to have to uh, say on this. It certainly is misleading. There is no doubt about that. I don't necessarily think it's false advertising. Um, I mean, even for the most part, you got most of the beat by beat of Midgard to like the very end where mm-hmm. it completely changes stuff around. We got four hours of the game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I, I don't think a false advertisement would uh hold much weight in court um uh, especially since remake cannot be uh defined yeah very well because everyone has their own definition of remake um and i'm sure what their definition at square enix is we're remaking the story or something yeah. Like. yeah but they knew they knew what everyone thought yeah that's yeah. what i was gonna say yeah everyone and their mother thought just remake um mm-hmm. even then i thought that's like oh that's kind of boring just saying remake why don't you just call it final fantasy 7 so you don't have to call it final fantasy 7 remake 2 mm-hmm. or something like that or put some really stupid latin subtitle underneath it um like they're known for doing um yes it's very misleading but um i mean I kind of find it amusing how it came out. It came to be. I wasn't exactly disappointed or mad or anything like that. I I just found it funny more than anything. Um, I don't really have that kind of emotional attachment that like, um, whereas say, I mean, I, I, I may say like, Oh, they ruined the story or something, but it's not like my whole life is over because they decided not to be, completely faithful to a game I really like. Like, even, like, if I can think of what some of my favorite games, if they remade that and then decided to do com- something completely different, I would still feel the same way. I'm like, okay, this is a different product. It's not the original product. They're not coming to your home and taking your game away like Blizzard did with Warcraft 3. Mm-hmm. It's like, you still have the original to go back to. So, while I completely get people are upset that we're they never didn't get getting the remake, remake that they wanted. And I completely understand. And I totally sympathize with you, but I mean, the milk has already been spilt now. So yeah, in my yeah. head, it's like, let's just see what happens from here. Let's, let's watch this uh, dumpster fire go down the river together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ju- yeah, exactly. At this point, there's not much, that can be done uh like it's past the point of no return it's not a remake anymore like it's a sequel 
you know, the characters have knowledge of the original story, right? So, and, and how things more or less play out. So if that's not a sequel, <laughs> you know, the that, originals reliance, right? The original yeah. had to have occurred for this to happen. Yeah. The, the original game in some shape or form, like either in a possible timeline or a timeline that already exists, you know, has happened. And now we're playing as the same characters under a different set of circumstances. This is crisis that's, core three. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. I mean, even, um, Maximilian dude, you know, who's like hype central for the game who, you know, the developers have even, you know, contacted and they value his opinion. He's like, this is a sequel, like in one of the latest discussion videos that he had, you know? Yeah. So it's like, at, at this point, if it walks like a sequel, talks like a sequel, it's a sequel. It says remake, right? In the, right. In the game. But that more than likely refers to like Sephiroth remaking the timeline, right? Sure. But I do think it was misleading to call the game that because when people when when people um, who follow video games like us think of the term remake, um, until this game happened, a remake was always like um, a graphical improvement of an existing game, right? And it, they typically wouldn't change too much of the story or like the genre, right, of of the game. Right. So like uh, Shadow of the Colossus is a remake on PS4, mm -hmm. but on PS3, it's a remaster, right? Right. So mm -hmm. if someone came up to you and said, oh, I've ne I've, uh, I'm going to play Shadow of the Colossus for the first time, you would ask them, are you playing the PS2 version, the remaster, or the remake, right? And everybody will understand what you're saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I will say I'm playing Trials of Mana right now, and that is a that's a remake. Mm -hmm. that, that's like the core foundation and like all the stuff you remember from the Super Nintendo game are right there. It's just all 3D with a new com with a with a modern combat. It's still the same core foundation of uh, action with role playing elements. Mm -hmm. And it, like everything that the game is known for is still there. It's just with a new, it's just like rebuilt from the ground up again, which that's a remake in my head. Uh, even from the beginning, we've talked about this in previous podcasts. I've always looked at FF7 as a reimagining because mm -hmm. you could already tell from the previews that they were making a lot of compromises that would not be, uh, have the game being exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Like they would go by the general story beats, but there would be a lot of different in between. Yeah. So in my head, I was like, okay, this is a reimagining, a reinterpretation, more than a remake. So I always get... thought the word remake didn't work well for this game. Yeah, I you know I'm totally agreeing with you guys. I think that you know no, but like Eric, like you said, no one's stealing the game from me. I can go back and play the original. All that is true. I'm not really that upset because I would have bought the game if they marketed it as a sequel. I still would have bought it. So I don't think that it, I really lost money with this because I would have still spent money on day one for the game. But what bothers me a little bit about this separate from the game is that I feel that they really capitalized on the excitement of the idea of a remake. And I think that Square is starting to have a little bit of a problem with their marketing arm because if you look at, for example, Final Fantasy 15, a month before the game came out, we had the Omen trailer, which had absolutely nothing to do with the game at all. And mm -hmm. it was literally a month before the game came out, right? And it had nothing to do with the game. And they put it out there like, yeah, this is the game. And that was very misleading. And well, that, go ahead. Let me, let me ask you, since, since you're on the topic right now. Sure. Do you think the game would have sold better if it was marketed as a sequel no. instead of a instead of a remake? So absolutely my, not. <laughs> my response to that is that that's not my problem. That's their problem. But that, that is the problem. problem. That, that, solution. that, that they, is they, the problem. They, that it's unethical to lie to people to get stuff to be sold. I mean, if I go mm -hmm. to the grocery store and I buy a loaf of bread. And I get home and it has bagels in it. And I call the grocery store and say, this has bagels in it. And the grocery store is like, 
Well, would you have bought it if it said bagels on it? That's, that's not a good excuse to do something <laughs> you're not supposed to do just because, like, oh, you wouldn't have bought it if it said the right thing. You know, like, that's not a... No, no. <laughs> we didn't lie to you. We just didn't tell you the truth. <laughs> so, well, I just want to give an example of an interview from Katase and E3 2019 to give an example of some context of, of how I felt that they were not the best with this. And I think they had good intentions. They wanted to surprise us. But this is an example of an interview with uh, Damian Hatfield and Lucy O'Brien from IGN. This is right after the E3 event. There's three questions here I'm going to read. And I'm going to read Katase's response. You can go watch the video if you want. Just E3 2019 Katase IGN. And you'll find it. But Lucy O'Brien, she works at IGN. She says, well, I was going to ask, are you expanding on those character stories in a sort of ways that fans may not expect? Katase says, no, I mean, we really want to respect the original and keep everything people loved about this original game and the character stories. So we're not going to betray anyone's expectations towards this. But what we are really trying to do is there are obviously a number of characters who maybe only became popular after the game's release more minor characters. We want to go into their stories and add more episodes and more elements to their stories and flesh that out too. He says, we really want to respect the original. So we're not going to betray anyone's expectations knowing full well that everyone thinks this is a remake, right? Then Lucy says, now it's a little preemptive, obviously to talk about further games in this project, but the official line is this is part one of a bigger project. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, there has obviously been a lot of call from people from a very long time ago now to remake this game and redo it. And even from before we actually finalized that we're going to do this project, we've been thinking about how we might approach it. And yet the sheer amount of volume that you had in those games from that era and trying to redo that with modern technology and realism that the modern gamers expect, we obviously very quickly realized it was going to be a huge amount of content, a massive volume of game there. So while we're looking, we decided that for the first game in the project, we very much wanted to focus on Midgar and what happens there. So that's really how the construction of this first game and this project came about. He's acknowledging right there that what people think this is, that it's a remake of the game. He literally mm -hmm. said that. And then one more part to this, Lucy says, do you think some of the story beats in Final Fantasy VII Remake are still going to have the impact that they did back then, especially considering we were all traumatized? Katase says, one of the big things about this project is we obviously, since the release of the original game, we had Advent Children, the animated movie, as a kind of sequel to the story. And a lot of people saying we really want to play the original Final Fantasy VII adventure with that kind of a vi visuals. So that's one of the main ideas about what we're doing now. And I think with those new visuals, obviously keeping the story with its emotional content, emotional impact the same, but having the new level of visual representation that it really will have the same kind of impact that it did back in the day. If you read that and hear what they're saying, okay, knowing what we know now, could you see possibly he was beating around the bush maybe somewhere? Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's no Katase, way. Katase is the worst at interviews. Dude, that was totally misleading. That was, it was, totally, yeah. that was incredibly misleading. And it's, it's just, even the, the initial launch trailer of Final Fantasy VII Remake, it has cloud like going through the streets and it, it says the promise has been made. Right. And then it shows the logo of final fantasy seven. And then instead of tech demo, like it had in 2005, it says remake. Are mm -hmm. you kidding me? That didn't say sequel. It did, they gave, they were giving <laughs> you the impression that we're remaking the game. That if was, it was Nomura, totally misleading. He would have danced around that question a lot better. Nomura is better. Yeah. He was better. Um, no, I know that interview was very close to the release, so obviously the idea of the idea was already there. But does it the fact that they are going in this direction feel more like an afterthought? Because throughout the entire game until the end, like the ghosts are just interfere with you once in a while. And that's it. They don't and then you go right back to where you were. The ghosts don't even come up again until the ghosts decide to come back. Like, when I see it that way, it feels like this entire idea was a complete afterthought while they're in making the game. Well, people have pointed out that um, right after the Mako reactor explosion, 
um, Cloud has a vision of Sephiroth that he doesn't in the original game. And Sephiroth literally leads him around a corner. That's where right? things change. And that's where things like start going different because then when Cloud meets Aerith later on, um, she's already having to deal with the ghosts and Cloud can't see them at the time. But people are speculating that Sephiroth led Cloud away intentionally so that he would never meet Aerith because she was just kind of walking through that area. But the ghosts are already interfering and making sure that she's still there when Cloud shows up. They're like literally not letting her leave. They're they're kind of swarming her. Oh yeah, that, I guess that is. So it it seems really? to be it seems to be that they had this. I it, it there's like bits and pieces of it sprinkled in through the whole game. Um, there's also a part where Aerith um, is trying to calm down Marlene and take her away to save her before the plate crashes, and there's like a flash of. Um, some kind of flashback or something like Aerith touches Marlene and actually gives her some kind of um, vision, some kind of vision that things are going to be okay or something. And then she like gives her like a, a shush, like don't mention that to anybody. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Marlene is like, okay. And she's like, I can trust this girl. So there are like, it's sprinkled about. Yeah. Sprinkled in there that like Aerith is not whom, who she seems to be. Who is this Sephiroth guy? He's like very important, and like these ghosts are just See, showing up all the time. <laughs> yeah, this goes. I, this goes back to the point I was making earlier. In my opinion, the 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 need to keep this a secret, which I'm very impressed they kept this a secret with all the leaks. And I read that they leaked the the whole plot line of the chapter marks, but the the end boss was called Genova, and in, in the documents of the leak. You know, it wasn't called the Harbinger of Fate or anything. So a good job on keeping that a secret. But the fact that they kept that a secret, I think dampened the story because instead of having the impact that it could have had, I was disappointed. And if I had yeah, known you... this was a sequel beforehand, it would have been better, more well received. And they could have liked those moments with Aerith. They could, we could have been clued into her trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Right. You know, and her trying to have this anxiety about the plate crashing. Okay, what can I do? I want to re mount a rescue effort because I want to know that there's nothing. There's, I did everything that I could. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, she knows what happened the first time around. Right. I don't, right. keeping this yeah. a secret didn't help anything. So it's just, I, I guess it helps sell copies, but yeah. that's, <laughs> that's the, that's the part I don't like, you know? Yeah. It's a good Good business strategy, but a unsatisfying like uh, is it storytelling or, or narrative strategy. I mean, a good business strategy in that, like this you time. said, selling selling as many copies as you can. Yeah, but they yeah they, between this the Omen trailer, they they had the two year anniversary stream for Final Fantasy fifteen where they were going to announce a big news for Final Fantasy fifteen. I mean. That's not necessarily misleading in a way, but once you got on there, all they announced was the cancellation of all this DLC, right? They yeah. are so out of touch that they can't even comprehend how this stuff's going to play out. Well, their big problem is they announce stuff way too early. Mm -hmm. Like, they promise you something, and then down the line, it's like, oh, well, sorry, we can't do it anymore. Yeah. Like, I say you need to have something concrete when you announce something like when they, all right. So when they announced this game in 2015, Nomura himself said he had no idea he was the director. Yeah. Until this, uh, until the trailer came up and I'm like, what planning is going on in this company that you show the trailer for the first time? For the FF7 remake, and the director doesn't even know he's directing the game. <laughs> yeah, I think they were afraid it was going to be leaked at the time because there were there were rumors that it was going to be announced going into that E3 five years ago, but nobody believed them because it was like it you corresponded know, it was like, with the release of Final Fantasy VII on a, on the PS4 or something like that, right? Yeah, so people did not believe it that it was going to happen anyway. There, but there was, there was rumors that turned out to be correct, and so I think 
Square was trying to get on top of that and so that they were the ones breaking the news. But then, like you said, there was no game even built yet at the time. So it's like... <laughs> to be totally truth well i don't say truthful but clear here i think that i don't know if this is true but i was t saying that same thing to he on one time when we were talking and uh, he has been a guest on our podcast before he's he's very knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about this stuff and he said that namura knew when when that trailer was shown that announced the seven remake namura knew at that point that hmm. he was the director but he didn't know but they had, I think what he told me was they showed him that trailer at a board meeting or something like that. Oh, Before, so the first time he saw the trailer was when he learned. Right. But it wasn't at that event. It wasn't like, oh, crap. So he, <laughs> oh, so he, may, you know. so he maybe found out two weeks before the rest of us or something along those lines, maybe a month before or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so I don't know if that changes anything, but I just want to kind of add that little tidbit. So. Well, just in general, they're pretty notorious for uh, having a plan, having big hopes, and then like something happens along the way. I think FF15 was a huge thing for that. They had like a whole big. Uh, th this is not as relevant as what I was saying, but like they're they had that big special presentation for 15, and so it was like it's going to release in September, and had a big animation for it. Oh, terrible! Everyone was crowding losing their minds and then and like a few weeks later there's like just Tabata just like here sitting in a stool be like <laughs> 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 yeah about that FF15 special presentation we have uh, it's going to be delayed for about two months uh, turns out we didn't really have much time to make a game so we kind of went two more months until people figure out we didn't make a game you know <laughs> then the camera, so, uh, the camera clicks off and he's like what I'm really not saying is I asked for nine months and they gave me two months. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me 11 hours. So like, <laughs> well, I guess that's better. Yeah. But I have no other comments on this aspect of their misleading, the branding being misleading. I do think it was, but I'm with you guys that the yeah. game's out. I'm not much I can do now. I'm disappointed yeah. that we're not getting a remake. So I want people to now ask Katase in every interview like they have been for 15 years. When's the remake coming? <laughs> yeah, it was misleading, but I don't think if anyone actually tries to sue Square Enix oh, I don't think for it's false illegal, advertising. Legally misleading, yeah. Yeah, I like that won't look at I've seen a couple threads. I they're not they're nothing to take serious, but what, what they they're they're like, I want to sue Square Enix for misleading this is false advertising i'm like you're it's not gonna hold up what they could do what they could do somebody could do is they could say you know i invested x amount of money into your company you know i bought so many shares because i was anticipating a remake and now it's a sequel and now my money i could sell my money now but i don't know if their shares have gone down i mean you could say something mm. like that maybe but then you're getting into international law with the, I, I'm totally over my head. I don't know. It's, it's probably not worth that hassle. Let's just put it that way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> let's say, yeah. let's say hypothetically you won that case, which would take probably a good few years mm -hmm. for it to happen. Um, best case scenario, anyone who purchased final fantasy seven remake will get like $3 in credit back. <laughs> And that's like maybe like seven or eight years after the game came out. Yeah. So not worth it at any level. Yeah. To me, it's not really a legal thing. It's just a criticism. You know, me showing my criticism for the way they're acting. And I would prefer if they not do this in the future, because on the next game that they announce, whether it's Final Fantasy 16 or part two of the seven remake, I know that no matter what the hell they say is not going to be what's happening. The, you know? the uh the only thing you can do to properly retaliate back is not purchase the next game yeah which i'm still mm -hmm. i'm still going to purchase the next game so i yeah i have no because values. we're all we're all drunk <laughs> we'll buy, we'll, square enix will crap in a can and we'll buy it yeah I, i'm just like president shinra i i will just do whatever i'll just keep whatever <laughs> oh my I god i mean the 
the um the best best thing you could do i guess is to not buy the um not buy the next one and then make it clear that you still want a remaster of the original game with like relocalization and, that, and stuff like that yeah relocalization um maybe um if they could redo the backgrounds to make them look better with um more realistic less blocky character models right something like that there's a there's a variety of different ways you can do it um that we one, even see that with mm-hmm. like the mods of the game you know on pc but if they were to put out an official product ff7 remaster right then the best way would to speak your mind to the company would be to put your money towards that and not towards the remake that they sold you as a remake but is actually a sequel <laughs> Yeah, right. That's the crazy so. thing. They they keep with this idea of a remake. They they keep saying, "Oh, it'd be so expensive." Blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, you don't have to make a triple A, freaking five part, freaking thing that lasts twenty five years. Just mm-hmm. do what you're saying. Relocalize the original, so we get we have the option of having a relocalized version, and then update the the characters so they're not so clunky looking. Update the backgrounds update the pre- pre-rendered backgrounds and just mm-hmm. give us that version of the game. Maybe you have an orchestrated version of the soundtrack or something yeah. like that. Have that, all that stuff optional with the original and call it a day. That's yep. all you got to do. Give, I'll tell cloud, you this. give cloud a nose. <laughs> if you took the padding out and the overly extended dungeons out of the game, it would be probably about a 20 hour game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that would have been better for it. Like, I know there's this huge debate about how much you should get out of your $60, but if I, ha- I would take a uh, 20 hour, very focused experience over a 30 to 40 hour game that has heavy padding and too long of dungeons for with like the nice focus parts in between. I agree with that. You get what I'm saying there. Yeah, I agree as well. Yeah, I think they they were going to get a lot of crap either way. So you might as well just make the game 20 hours, have it good pacing, you know, have those epic moments still feel epic, and then I think that's that's fine. That that would have been a good way to go about it. But yeah. So, but anybody else on the the branding or misleading or remake first? sequel or anything else they want to comment on before we do anything else? No, I don't, I don't think it's, I mean, I think it's misleading. It's not anything to sue anybody over. <laughs> Get ready for the next stupid title that they make for the second game. It's going to be something with re something. Yeah. Paw fantasy seven yeah. remake chain of memories. It's over happening. Three fifty two days. Yeah. <laughs> 350 over two days, Zach Fair. I don't know. (laughs) Okay, so let's move on.